Hey, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. Did you know that sleep is one of the most important things when it comes to your overall and your brain health? And it's something that so few of us really get right and we often don't prioritize. But sleep is something that on the flip side, there's so much we can do to improve as far as the quality, the amount of sleep that we're getting. One of the areas that most people tend to make mistakes around as it relates to getting good sleep is that they don't pay attention to all the things that happen during the day that are going to impact their sleep at night. And I know I've definitely been guilty of many of these things. So in this video, I'm gonna talk through four ways that our daytime routines can impact the quality of our sleep. And we'll talk about some practical steps that you can be putting into place to improve your daytime routine to get a better night's sleep. So maybe the most important part of this whole video is to understand that the quality of the sleep that you get at night is a direct reflection of the quality of what you do during the day. So whether it's exercise or the stress levels you experience, all of these things impact how well you're going to sleep that night. But like I said, there are really four things that we should be paying attention to as it relates to nailing down our routine during the daytime so that we can improve our sleep quality at nighttime. The first thing to keep in mind is that when you wake up, what you do next actually does matter for your sleep that night. And research is suggesting that getting exposure to natural daylight in the morning is a great way to set your circadian rhythms up for success for that night's sleep. That's kind of a counterintuitive thing. Why would what happens in the morning influence what happens at night? But our eyes contain receptors at the back of our eyes that speak directly to our brain. And these receptors are super sensitive to certain wavelengths of light. And it seems to be the case that getting exposure to the right types of wavelengths of light early in the day, in this case, natural light, daylight, would be very helpful to train our brains so that they're ready to wind down at the end of the day and get us into good sleep. If you live somewhere that's further north, it may be the case that you're not getting as much of this natural light. It is the case that even if it's not that bright, it still does a lot of good for your brain telling it that it's the morning. But something that you might take into account is that for certain people, getting a natural spectrum light uh, and getting exposure to that first thing in the morning could be helpful. On the flip side of this, if you want more natural light and kind of brighter lights in the morning, what you want is less of intense light in the evening. And specifically, you want less artificial night, light at night. So point one is more natural light in the morning. Point two is less artificial light at night. Research is indicating that blue light exposure in particular seems to throw off our body's production of the hormone melatonin. Melatonin is very important to getting good sleep. And there's a number of other reasons why we don't want too much exposure to artificial light at night. Uh, one of those is that the source of this artificial light at night tends to be our screens. Our screens tend to produce content that can be stressful and activating. So point two here is to minimize artificial light at night. And if you are getting exposure to artificial light at night, consider trying to uh, either decrease the brightness or potentially using something like a blue light blocking technology. But I think the more important thing to do is in the one to two hours before bed, try to limit your exposure to screens in particular. Point number three, and something that I think all of us would benefit from paying attention to, is paying attention to our caffeine exposure, especially afternoon. Caffeine is an amazing molecule. Uh, there's some research suggesting that it may have some positive effects on brain health, but it often is forgotten that caffeine has a very long half-life. What I mean there is if you were to drink a cup of coffee at noon, you still have half of that coffee floating around in your bloodstream, specifically the caffeine from that coffee at 6 p.m. Similarly, if you had a cup of coffee at 3 p.m., then at 9 p.m., half of that caffeine is still in your system. It's because it has a half-life of about six hours. So I think for most people, minimizing caffeine exposure in the afternoon, starting to really pay attention to this after noon, and then for some people, uh, for me, for example, I try to completely shut off caffeine consumption after 2 p.m. There's no absolute rule here. Some people are ha uh, faster metabolizers, but generally speaking, most people are probably going to benefit from minimizing caffeine exposure in the afternoon. So that's point number three. The last thing I'll just mention here as it relates to daytime routines and daytime strategies to improve nighttime sleep is to really be careful with the alcohol that you're consuming towards the end of the day. Now, people are still all over the spectrum as it relates to their thoughts on whether alcohol is or isn't good for our health. I think we're getting a pretty clear signal that it's not doing your brain health 
any favors. And I think that will be increasingly strong as research comes out and the years go on. But what is definitely the case is that when we drink alcohol right before bed, the idea of a nightcap, for example, this really messes with the quality of our sleep. So even though it might seem like alcohol can make us fall asleep and is good for us sleeping, it's actually the exact opposite. It may make us sleepy or may make us tired, but it doesn't necessarily give us high quality sleep. So it's important to, if you're trying to optimize your sleep quality, limit the exposure to alcohol in the hours before bed. And I'm not trying to advocate for drinking more alcohol or for drinking alcohol at all, but if you are going to be consuming alcohol earlier in the day is probably better for brain health because that allows you to minimize the effects of alcohol consumption on sleep. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap. What I said at the start of this video is that the daytime routine is really important to the quality of our sleep. Sleep quality, really important to our overall and our brain health. And four things that all of us can do to help improve the quality of our daytime routine to optimize our sleep quality are number one, get more natural light in the morning. Number two, use less artificial light at night, especially blue light, pay attention to your screen exposure. Three, minimize your caffeine exposure specifically in the afternoon. And four is to be careful with minimize your nighttime alcohol consumption, especially right before bed. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. Thank you for joining. I'll talk to you next time.